to the sky Never let adventures pass you by Be free and follow your crazy dreams We're living our vision in the RV Come ride with us and you'll be free We're now at an area that's called Beaches Town Center and it's just full of a lot of shopping and dining and it's where two beaches meet, Neptune and Atlantic Beach. Sometimes even in a crowded parking lot we're able to get in. $20 a park regardless of how long you stay here. But you can stay till 2 in the morning. Night, sweetie. Good night, John Boy. What? Who's John Boy? Good night, Mama. Good night, Daddy. Good night, children. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, John Boy. John Boy. <laughs> now we gotta figure out where we're going. Where are we going? I don't know. We better figure it out quick. <laughs> if I'm lost along the way. If I wander off onto a different trail Will you forgive me if I fail? Pulled over here at a, a little strip mall area to watch online our granddaughter's dance competition. That just finished. She has another one later today that we're going to watch as well. But now we're going to try to head down here to Amelia Island. If I cry Oh, it is bright. I tried to tell you that. Did you? He's always like, I don't like to take my sunglasses. I'm like, you got to see. <laughs> She's still waiting on me to lock the doors. This is comical watch. Please, please. Thank you. You have to have a, a permit to drive on the beach. So if you're not from this county, then you have to get a permit. And it's only $5 for the permit, but we didn't even check into getting it because we ain't going on that beach. Mm -mm, we're not getting started. But I saw online, you can get them online. And I'm not sure if you can get them over here at the gate or not, at, or you know, at the ranger here. You can check there if, you, if you're interested, but you can go online on the website. And the showers though, rinse your feet off. It's very nice here today. The weather, it's cooler than yesterday. It doesn't feel like it's as humid either. Very fine. Fine and light. Fine. It's a fine. Is she talking to me or you? We got a little pathway going down through here where the sand is a little bit more packed. We saw some trails where some people got a little more brave and that's probably the one that got stuck. Uh -huh, <laughs> yeah. But we're always looking for those beaches that you can drive out on the beach. And uh, we're not taking the van on this one. <laughs> not this one, no. <laughs> the one in Texas is a Magnolia Beach. That one is we really probably, packed yeah. hard. You can go on there really easy. If you have an all-wheel drive vehicle, you can probably be, you'd probably be okay on this one section. It's for residents. Wouldn't that be nice to live somewhere like that where you have your own private access to the beach? Yes, please.
We love our days when we're exploring and learning more about history of our country. And, but we also love these moments like this by the ocean. It's just peaceful. Watching people look at the creepo with a camera. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. able to check out the campground just to yes. drive through and yeah. oh, okay we're driving on the historic canopy road is what it's called I can see why This is a really cool campground. It is. Got camping sites backed up to the sand dunes and walking distance to the beach. It's really neat. And this was called this, again. This one is the is uh, this Atlantic? Atlantic Beach Campground yeah. right here. And then on the other side of the little point, there's another camping area called Am Amelia River Campground. So the one we're on is pretty small with only 21 sites. And then the other one has about um, 40, so. Another thing to keep in mind when you come to these state uh, state parks is if you drive through, you can use their dump stations. So that's an option too. And there's nothing that doesn't say anything anywhere about charging you for that. So, and so you can just pull up, empty your tanks, and I don't I don't see fresh water there. It's just a rinse for your black tank so mo but you you would have to pay to get into the park like we paid the yeah, six dollars true we, but that wasn't even get to get in the campground that's just for the use of the park right to go to the use. beach or whatever a day use yeah but it is an option Within this same state park here, they have what's called Fort Clinch. This is a visitor center, and their fort's over here. You want and to it's it? just two fifty to get in to the fort. Oh, oh, there's admission. Heck, yeah. I was getting ready to walk on over. <laughs> the entrance to the Cumberland Sound and the St. Mary's River has been of vital importance to the people of Florida for close to 300 years. This site was first fortified in 1736 by the Spanish when they held colonies in Florida. From 1736, various nations to control the territory have garrisoned and fortified this site to protect the entrance to the St. Mary's River and Cumberland Sound. After the end of the Second Seminole War, the United States started construction of a fort, later named Fort Clinch, in 1847. It was part of its third system of coastal defenses conceived earlier in the century, which guided fortifications throughout this period.
The fortified compound is pentagonal in shape with both inner and outer walls and consists of almost 5 million bricks. There are corner bastions and embrasures in the outer walls and several structures in the interior courtyards, including a two-story barracks. The fort was named in honor of General Duncan Clinch after his death in 1849. General Clinch fought in the War of 1812 and was an important figure in the First and Second Seminole Wars. Confederate forces seized the fort in early 1861. It was used as a safe haven for Confederate blockade runners during the first year of the Civil War. However, changes in technology, specifically the development of rifled cannon, had improved weaponry to the point that the fort's brick walls were vulnerable to attacks and thus obsolete. In March 1862, General Robert E. Lee ordered abandonment of the fort in order to use scarce troops in other areas. She went around the other corner and I'm like, well, where are you going? She goes, the bakery's back here. Are you serious? That's what it says, bakery, see? Bakery. Afterwards, federal troops reoccupied the fort, taking control of the adjacent Georgia and Florida coasts. They used the fort as the base of Union operations in the area throughout the Civil War. The fort was placed on caretaker status in 1869, and it remained so until 1898 when the Army garrisoned it during the short Spanish-American War. In September of that year, the Army abandoned it again. The fort gradually deteriorated. During the Great Depression, workers of the Civilian Conservation Corps began restoration of the fort during the 1930s. It was restored to the Civil War era. In 1935, the state of Florida bought 256 acres that included the then abandoned fort and the surrounding area. Fort Clinch State Park, including the fort, opened to the public in 1938. The fort was closed to the public during World War II and used as a communications and security post. It was reopened to public visits after the war ended. The fort was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1972. It is interpreted largely in terms of its use as a base of Union operations during the American Civil War. State personnel reenact military life at the fort, which is open from 8 a.m. until sundown year-round. Oh, sorry, had to go. Oh, whatever. Our next stop is the most exciting place. You won't believe it. Tell them where it is, honey. Where is it going to be? I, I thought you already knew. Oh, Walmart? Yeah, yeah isn't that exciting? <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some water. I promise we won't take you there. I want to take you out. Show you. Time of your life. There's the lighthouse straight ahead. You can barely see it above the trees. I want to figure out what it takes to give you everything you desire. Palace Saloon is supposed to be the oldest bar saloon in the state of Florida. Water, everything at Walmart. Then we stopped and had supper. 
Mexican and, restaurant. And now Michelle is finishing her pie. <laughs> One of them. She got from Blueberry. Pie Heaven. I wanna level out, order something, and stay in. Well, good morning. It is Tuesday, April 4th, Savannah, Georgia. We've been here, this will be day two. First day, we stayed at a Cracker Barrel over on the south end. After we got done working yesterday, we had to do laundry, so we went and did laundry, and then we came to this other Cracker Barrel. It's just right off of the interstate as well, hence the loud noise. Both Cracker Barrels are so packed. They both have a lot of RVs. The whole back of this Cracker Barrel where the RV parking is back here. If I went around there, it's all full of vans and Class A's and uh, travel trailers. I think there might have been one fifth wheel. We've got one, two, uh, three RVs parked right in front because there's not enough room in the back. Just kind of giving you a little update because we didn't get time to film at all yesterday. Have you had a chance to look to see what there is to do in Charleston? I have not. <laughs> or what we want to do in Charleston. Other than I, know I it's haven't really either. Pretty. Yeah, I haven't either. and we were at 40 percent 39 40 percent on the batteries we drove two hours and we got up to 75 percent so we're over here at a cracker barrel but we just went right down the road um, just around the corner here that's really close to this cracker barrel filled up with fuel and so today um, what we're going to do is we're going to run for maybe a couple hours two or three hours and see how much it charges the batteries and then go over and fill it up with fuel again so that we know we started at full fuel and we're gonna fill it up to see how much it took that way we know how cost-effective it is to run at idle to charge the batteries it's basically the same thing you would do with a diesel generator and remember this is a diesel engine Alexa set timer for two hours two hours starting now All right, and let it run. And at the same time this is running, we can also run the AC up here um, to help cool it off in the back. Our main thing is to see how much it costs to run this to charge the batteries at an idle state. When we're driving, it charges the batteries a lot quicker, of course. So at the same time that it's running, we might as well have the AC running on here to uh, help cool this down. Um, Actually, the AC with this will cool this entire coach down really well, better than the AC in the back. The AC in the back cools the back down really well. Like myself working up here, you kind of need a little fan here to help keep yourself cool on hot days or uh, run the coach and turn that AC on. But, uh, but again, our main thing today while we're going to be working is uh, we're, we're going to see how much this costs to... Uh, to actually use the engine to charge the batteries at an idle state. If we run that AC back there, it's gonna be fighting against this for charging the batteries. And this already cools the entire, the entire coach really well. You said it does cool you back here too, right? Yeah, I can feel it back here. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. And uh, that should actually help charge the batteries even faster. 50 fresh, 50 gray, and 56 black. We've been going about four to five days uh, the way we've been using things. And 
we've had people before ask, you know, how many days can you get out of your takes? Well, it just depends on how you're, you know, how often you're going to the restroom, how often you're using your own or, uh, you know, a, a facilities like Cracker Barrel or a, a gas station. Um, are you taking a full shower? Are you conserving on your water? The way we're doing it, we're going about four to five days. That's the timer. All right, so it's been two hours now. Alexa, cancel. And uh, right before I started the timer, I looked again. For some reason, this said 60%. So it was somewhere in between 60 and 62, apparently. It uh, had a little fluctuation there. Every once in a while, it'll do that. So we've ran two hours. We almost went up 20%. We're at 79% now. It usually... Uh, at idle charges at about 10 percent and that even seems like it's when we've ran the air conditioner back there too come to think of it we're at 79 percent so let's go ahead and run it for it just popped up to 80 percent so basically 20 percent it's went up so let's go ahead and run this coach for one more hour we should get it up to 90 percent alexa start timer for one hour all right, we're going to run this for one more hour, and that'll be it. That'll be plenty, and uh, because we'll be driving a little bit this evening as well. And then we're going to, as soon as we get done working here this evening, we're just going to go right around the corner here, fill up with fuel so that we know how much it cost us to run this at idle for three hours. Alexa, cancel timer. All right, we've ran the coach for three hours now, and the batteries are charged up to... 88% almost 90% so now we're not going to start the engine anymore the rest of the day we're going to turn the AC on in here that way we don't use any more fuel and there's the gallons. More importantly is the gallons because of the fuel prices going up and down. I took the pump out, shot some more in there and watching it coming up and so it is full. 1.769 gallons. So $6.77 it cost us to run this for three hours straight charging the batteries. And that increased it Approximately, usually an hour usually increases at about 10%. With us, if we're doing a lot of traveling, then we're charging the batteries while we're driving, and that charges them a lot faster than it does at idle, obviously. But that's good to know that you can just idle your engine, and, and that's all it's going to cost. I wasn't sure. We've never tested that before to see. I keep saying that we're going to, and then we never, never get it done. I always forget Wow, three hours at idle, 1.76 gallons. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, and hit that thumbs up. See you next week.